Hello everyone, it's Sam and I am back today to film a video and that video is my top five favorite classic books. So I love classic books. I find them interesting because I love history and when I read a classic book it's like a piece of history because even if it's a work of fiction you're still reading it from the perspective of somebody who lived during the time period in which it took place. Unlike modern historical fiction written now where, you know, it's written from the perspective, it's written by somebody that lives now. So it's not quite the same as if being written by somebody who lived in the time period in which it took place. So it's like a slice of history. You get a view into a culture, the culture of the time that you don't quite get um, from books written about prior periods now, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But that is why I like classics. I find them interesting. There's so many good stories out there that are timeless and excellent writing and I know a lot of people seem a little bit daunted by classical literature because they feel like it would be hard to read and that can be true when you're first starting out but the more and more you read it, the more familiar you are with, with the way things are worded and things like that and it gets easier and really there's just so many wonderful works of fiction out there and yeah I want to share some of them with you guys some of my favorites so I'm going to show you a book I'm going to give you kind of a short synopsis of what it's about and then tell you why I like it and hopefully it will inspire some of you guys to pick them up and try them out for yourself so yes let's do this so the first book I have to show you guys is The Life of Charlemagne by Einhard and this is actually a piece of nonfiction it was written by Einhard obviously and he lives was a scholar that lived in the court of Charlemagne. Charlemagne was a medieval king that lived in about the 800s and he is one of the more famous ones. His reign is marked by a lot of interesting and unexpected things such as he was a big supporter of education, founded lots of schools, he believed in equal education for women and men, like he taught, well in so far as he taught his daughters as well as his sons, as well as a time of relative peace and prosperity. He is a fascinating king and to hear that recounted by somebody who lived with him and talked to him and saw them I find utterly fascinating and that's what I love about this book. To hear words, to read, to hear words, <laughs> um, to see, to read the words written by somebody who witnessed this man, who lived with him and talked to him and admired and respected him is fascinating because you get this perspective that you wouldn't get from just reading history of Charlemagne. I mean, he lived in the 800s, so these words are 1200 years old and I find that utterly utterly fascinating and he had an interesting life and it's recounted by Einhard and that is why I love this book and it's one of my favorites and it's not very big I mean it's only like 67 pages and the print's big and it's highlighted because I read this in school so don't judge me. My next favorite classical book I don't actually own though that needs to be rectified because I really really want to own this book but that book is The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer and The Canterbury Tales follows a group of pilgrims um, who are on a pilgrimage to Canterbury and in order to pass the time everybody was tasked with having to tell a different story um, so it could either be sad it could be funny it could be creepy what have you and it's a collection of stories told by the people on this pilgrimage and each story is titled by the person telling it so you have the knight's tale the reeve tale, the Miller's tale, etc. I love this book. I love it because it is a perspective into medieval society um, that you don't get from a history book. It's an insight into a culture that doesn't really exist anymore and what it was like to live during that time and how people thought and how they talked, etc. Um, which I find really, really interesting. And it's like the everyday type of people. It's not just like your kings and your queens that you read about all the time in history. People that made, um, you know, their mark on history, if you will. But people who just lived every day. And I found that so funny. And there's one thing that I took away from that book, and that is fart jokes are just as funny then as they are now, because there was a lot of fart jokes in the Canterbury Tales. Yeah. Some of the stories were hilarious and really, really crude, um, but it is an interesting piece of literature and not as daunting as you might think, so that is my second favorite piece of classical literature. My next favorite book, and I recently mentioned this in my, um, Booktubeathon readathon because I'm going to be rereading it, and that book is Jane Eyre. I love this book. It follows a young girl who was raised by her aunt and lived with her cousins. Her aunt and her cousins are horrible. She ends up getting sent to this boarding school to learn to become a governess, where she is for the most part mistreated there, though she does make friends and work there for a while. She ends up leaving to go and become a governess for this Mr. Rochester, um, where she ends up teaching his ward and 
she soon discovers lots of interesting weird things are going on there that she doesn't quite understand so there is a mystery element to it and a romance element because she soon finds soon finds herself falling in love with Mr. Rochester. Um, this book, why I love it, I love it because Jane Eyre is a very very strong female character especially for the time period in which she lived in. She held fast to her convictions, she was not afraid to really speak her mind when she felt it necessary to do so, she did what she felt was right. I loved the romance element between her and Mr. Rochester, I thought it was really sweet and the whole story surrounding that and everything that goes on. I just, I love this book, it's a perfect, just, it's just, it's perfect, it's so special. The next book I have for you guys is Emma by Jane Austen. I actually had a hard time trying to decide which Jane Austen book I wanted to talk about because I love them all. And I decided to talk about Emma because I love this one. Um, it follows a young girl who lives with her father. Um, she's young, she's, you know, very romantic at heart, and she, throughout the book, tries to basically play matchmaker with the people around her, her best friend, even to a degree herself, um, and basically fails at all of it. I mean, basically, her matchmaking gets her into some trouble. Ultimately, she ends up falling in love with a Mr. Knightley, who um, is, she has known since she was a baby. He was a young man when she was a baby. Why I love the book is because it's just a heartwarming story. It's, it's sweet. Um, and like all of Jane Austen's novels, the social commentary of the time is hilarious because, you know, she just subtly mocks the society that she lived in, and it's entertaining, and it's funny, and I just love it. Trust me, it's, it's wonderful. You should read it. The last book I have to show you guys is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. This is considered to be one of the first great mystery novels. I believe it was written in 1859. The story follows Walter, Laura, and her half-sister Marion. And Walter is an art teacher and on his way to his new task of being this art teacher for these two half-sisters, Laura and Marion, he encounters a strange woman dressed all in white on the side of the road. He, she seems distressed and she needs help and he ultimately ends up helping her. He later finds out that she has escaped from an insane asylum. He arrives at his new job and he sees this his new pupil, Laura, and she, um, they're about the same age, and he realizes that she looks remarkably like this girl that he met on the side of the road. He later finds out that they actually know of this girl, that they grew up around her, they're from the same neighborhood, and that their mother actually had a close relationship with this Anne. Well, pretty soon, Walter and Laura end up sort of getting an attachment to each other. They fall in love. Marion sees this, and since Laura is promised to another man, a Sir Percival, she recommends that um, Walter leaves because she doesn't want to see bad things happen. So Walter leaves and he ends up going away from England on a trip of his own. Laura ends up against Marion who soon realizes that Percival isn't quite what he seems, he's a jerk pretty much, um, ends up marrying him and some time passes basically and um, Marion ends up coming to live with Laura and her husband Percival when they return back from their honeymoon. And at this point, um, Percival has also invited this Count Fosco, this like really shady, creepy guy, to come and live with them. Marion soon learns that um, Percival has basically run out of money and he keeps trying to bully her sister into signing this document that will basically sign over all of the wealth she has inherited to him. And she is refusing. And ultimately, this Count and Percival concoct this plan to basically switch the identities of Anne and the insane asylum and Laura. They want to switch them out because Anne is dying, they find out. So they figure if they can get Laura and the insane asylum, since they look alike, and pass her off as Anne and bring Anne back, Anne dies, they'll inherit all the money. So they end up trying, they end up fulfilling this plan while Marion is sick, they steal Laura to un. London and they switch him out and dies. Marion finds out about this. She goes to the insane asylum, um, basically ends up getting her sister back out by bribing the nurse and she ends up meeting up with Walter and the three of them basically uncover exactly what has been going on, what the grand scheme has been between Percival and this Count Fosco and basically try to seek their retribution and revenge against them. It is an excellent, excellent book. I love it because it is just a perfect mystery. It's wonderfully told. It's kind of haunting. It's creepy. It kept me engaged the whole time. Um, 
it was, I don't read a lot of mystery books, and this was actually one of the first ones I read, and it, it was just excellent. Excellently written, excellently executed, and it had me guessing the whole way. There was a few twists and turns I didn't quite expect, so it was very, very good. So guys, that was my list of five of my favorite classic books. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and it will inspire some of you to embark upon the wonderful road of reading classic books. Um, let me know in the comments if you have read any of these or if you are interested in reading classic books and perhaps would like a recommendation from a book that wasn't listed in my video. And if you liked, please thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, my fellow readers and book lovers, bye!